Las Vegas, Nevada, a town with unique laws, a place that attracts attention worldwide. Tonight, it has attracted the attention of the sport of gymnastics. 21-year-old Mike Racanelli is here for his third and final day of competition, as this is the gold medal round. Racanelli is the number one seed, but that distinction carried no respect in the first two rounds of this tournament. It took a 9.8 on the pommel horse to ensure him of a berth in these finals. Mike Racanelli is a collegian from Ohio State University. Showmanship, pizzazz, glamour, taking a chance all describe Las Vegas, and those words also describe gymnastics, especially when you're talking about Tom Schlesinger. This 1988 Olympian had to rally back from a fall on vaulting to turn in this 9.8 routine on the high bar. Schlesinger is a number two seed, but his sights are set on number one. Well, the only sure bet in the city of casinos is that the top two seeds of this competition are not a lock. You see, the third and final qualifier is Jeff Lutz. He established a neat record in the steel rings in the preliminaries. This 975 was part of a 57.8 all-around total. He is the highest qualifier for the finals. We are in the neon city of dreams, and for one gymnast, the dream of being the 1990 U.S. Challenge champion will come true. to the Cashman Field Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, site of the 1990 U.S. Gymnastics Challenge. Hello, everyone. I'm Leandra Riley, and if you've been watching our gymnastics, you know that this is the final day of competition after three rounds of challenges. If you are a newcomer to our telecast, then this is the championship final, much like the NCAA tournament. You've tuned in for the gold medal round. Now, let's take a look at the brackets and how our athletes qualified. Mike Racanelli. Jeff Lutz and Tom Schlesinger all had to advance first through the first round where there were six brackets, then in the second round where you can see there were three brackets, and now these are our final three athletes. Let me bring in now our expert analyst, 1984 Olympic gold medalist, and the team captain of that squad in Los Angeles, Peter Vidmar. And Peter, first of all, we've seen a lot of gymnastics here at the Cashman Field Center. What was the biggest surprise for you? Well, I think the biggest surprise was our number one seed, Mike Racanelli. He really shouldn't have made it into the final round because he had kind of a poor meet in round two against Bobby Stalter, who looked great. But on that last routine, Bobby Stalter had a, a weird, weird release move, landed on the bar, fell off the bar. That moved Mike in, and now all of a sudden he's a contender for the gold medal. What made it especially dramatic, as you said, was the fact that it was the last apparatus, and he literally slid in through the back door. We have the top three seeds here, so how do our three athletes compare? Well, I think it's going to be very even throughout the whole competition. Tom Schlesinger is a very tough gymnast, an NCAA veteran alternate in the Olympic team, he's probably going to be the one to beat if he just stays tough. But then again, Jeff Lutz is very strong, a very powerful performer, and then Mike Racanelli is uh, probably the number one ranked gymnast in this competition if he's really consistent. So let's look for a very tight race till the very end. Mistakes are going to cost very, very heavily. All right, men's gymnastics traditionally begins on floor exercise, and we'll be there when we come back from this timeout. Welcome back to the 1990 U.S. Gymnastics Challenge. Men's floor exercise is first. Tom Schlesinger, our first competitor. And everybody starts with a clean slate. None of the scores from the first or second rounds carry over. So everybody's on equal footing as this first event begins. Tom Schlesinger was born in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, but now calls Boulder, Colorado. He competes for the University of Nebraska, where he is a chemistry major. And while Tom is very consistent on all of the pieces of apparatus, floor is not necessarily his strongest event, but what he does, he does well. He mounts the round up against being full twisting double back, puts his hands down, that's a mistake. He loses a little bit there. There's a handspring way out in front with a full twist to a head spring. Now a little flare action on the floor. Up to pirouettes. That is not a requirement, though, right, that you do flares no, on the floor. No, it's not a requirement at all. However, now they use a flare in the compulsory on the floor. But a series of flares and optionals is certainly not required, but it's just uh, one of those skills that's almost become uh, one of those things that you just do. If you can do a flare, you might as well do it. 
Or you feel left out. I guess mandatory by trends. Now because of that mistake at the very beginning, Tom's not going to get as high a score as he hoped. Uh, his stronger events will occur at the end, so this could be deceiving. He, he still has a chance maybe to, to catch up as the lead rolls along. He's very, very powerful on the floor, and Mike has the chance now to jump into a, a sizable lead for the first round. There are six apparatus in men's gymnastics. They will begin with floor exercise and Olympic rotation. If we take another look at Tom Schlesinger's first tumbling pass. Just didn't gauge it right. He had enough power. He should have just pulled his knees in a little bit more. You're doing a lot of flips and a lot of twists up there, and it's hard to know all the time where the ground is, but he just opened up too soon. His last pass is a round-off big handspring double tuck. And he has plenty of rotation there. In fact, as he lands this time, he takes a step back. And he probably says, gee, I wish I could have done that in the mount. And Tom Schlesinger receives a 9.3. Might have been as high as 9.8 had he not touched the floor, maybe 9.6. Well, probably that range. Maybe around the 9.6 range. Mike Rapinelli is our next competitor. He's 21 years of age, was born in West Babylon, New York, still lives there, attends Ohio State University, where he is a senior majoring in history. And watch this mount. He's really proven himself on floor. He mounts with a double layup, but continues on after it. No, he's changed it. He did a full in. In the earlier rounds, he did a double layout into a flip-flop full, so maybe his ankle's hurting him. I see it's taped. Next pass is a little tuck. He's got that ankle taped. There's some flares and the pirouetting straddle handstand. That very is a, difficult. a tough handstand. Very difficult choice. So handspring down, full twist. And he's he's watered his floor down a little bit, but he knows that he's still got that difficulty level. He was just uh, doing much more difficult things with that double layout. Isn't that hard for the judges who know that he can do a tougher routine for them not to, quote, penalize him? It's up to the judges to really be disciplined enough to say, hey, look, he's still doing great things. Mm -hmm. He deserves to be scored by. And that deserves a good score. A fine performance by Michael Krakenauer in this battle on New York. Now, his first tumbling pass was different than what he'd been using before. He mounts with a full twisting double back, the same mount that Tom Schlesinger used. He has a lot of control, though. He does it quite well. No problem. Let's take a look now at his second pass. It's a round off, back handspring. Double tuck. See, and these are things that are really no problem for Mike because he does harder skills usually. Now his last tumbling pass once again is another double tuck and he's in control. And the score for Mike Racanelli, 9.65. So he jumps out to an early lead over Tom Schlesinger. Again, Mike Racanelli is the number one seed, Schlesinger the number two seed. And now it's time for the number three seed, Jeff Lutz, to compete. He is 21 years of age, calls Fort Worth, Texas his home, although he was born in Topeka, Kansas. Jeff Lutz competes for the University of Oklahoma. And Jeff mounts the round off big handspring. Arabian double front. Right on the money, too. Back handspring, pull in, back out. Just some flares. Not quite as, as extended. His legs aren't split as much as Mike Racanelli's, for example. There's a plange. A lot of strength there. Well, that's the beauty part of our head to head gymnastics meet. We really are comparing the gymnasts against each other. It's that's just right. three gymnasts. Takes a little breath here. He does his side scale. Setting up now for his dismount. 
And it's a round off pick handspring double tuck. Good landing. He'll get a good score there as well. Jeff Lutz. Jeff Lutz of Fort Worth, Texas. 21 years old from Fort Worth, Texas. Let's take a look at that first tumbling pass. It's called an Arabian double front. It's a round off back handspring, and while he is going backwards, he does a half turn right there, and all of a sudden does a double front. Now his second pass is similar to that because he still does a double or a double flip, but he adds an extra half turn, so it's a half turn then a half, which is basically a full twisting back flip into another back. A little low on the landing, and he had to turn over to the corner. Now he finishes with a double tuck. He's a little shuffle step in the end. He comes around, just a little bit of a shuffle step. But he'll still score well. And that he did. 9.75. Jeff Lutz takes the lead after one rotation. Floor exercise is now complete. And you are watching the U.S. Gymnastics Challenge on Sports Channel America. We pause now for a regional break. Welcome back to the gold medal round of the 1990 U.S. Challenge. Our three competitors are very, very close, but Jeff Lutz is the leader with a 9.75, Racanelli second, 9.65, Schlesinger third at 9.3. The men have now moved to the Pommel Horse event, where Mike Racanelli will be up first. And this is an event that really kept Mike in the competition in round two. He had a poor showing on floor, a 9.2 in the earlier round, and that's probably why he decided to change his floor routine for this round. But then when he went to Palm Wars, he scored a 9.8, his highest score so far in the U.S. Challenge. Let's see if he can do that again. Very, very difficult mount. It is a back more, back more, back more, all on one pommel. Three skills on one pommel, extremely difficult. It's a pommel rushing down to the end of the horse. Back more, pommel rushing again. Into a flare sequence, traveling across the horse without the pommel, sideways. Back to a handspring, into a scissor break. You have to do a required pendulum swing with your legs apart on pommel horse. There's a scissor. Another scissor. Now picks up into flares. Traveling again with and without the pommels, right up to a handstand parallel. Excellent design. Mike's future career ambition is to become an attorney. Now for his dismount, what he does, he picks up into flares. Travels down without the pommels, then puts that right hand back on the pommel and pushes up to a handstand, does a little pirouette. Good routine. And the score for Mike Racanelli, 9.8, as you see him walking with another pretty famous gymnast, Keith Avery, who's helped coaching him today. Head coach at Austin University, Peter Corman. You know, I mean, but I felt, I felt like I was in a good position, so I just kept going with it. Next up on pommel horse is Jeff Lutz. And when he's not on the pommel horse, he likes rock climbing and golf. Kind of an interesting character. <laughs> he's, he's funny. Now, he mounts with loops and travels lengthwise across the horse, turns and does it again. And I asked him about his routine earlier. I said, well, what exactly do you do? He says, uh, I don't know. It depends. <laughs> he says, just depends on how I feel. He says, I, sometimes I change it right in the middle of it. Travels back to the end of the Oh, he's a little bit off there. Good cover-up, very good cover-up. And that's a sign of a veteran competitor, to be able to uh, take something like that. Oh, he's just off. No. Oh, he just lost his lead. Now, will he get credit for a dismount, or...? Well, on his dismount, he tries to really get his hips up so he can do a, a, a circle right up to a handstand. Just didn't have it. He's got good plan strength, but it just wasn't enough to help him crank that up to a handstand. And he knew it right away. We have our third And four tenths of a point to spare for Tom Schlesinger. Well, it's... Uh, 
it, it looks like it won't be enough. And if Tom does a, a consistent job here, then uh, all of a sudden we might find that uh, Jeff has dropped down to, to third place from first. Waiting action for the score, and it was presented a bit of a quandary for the judges because they have to figure out whether or not he's had enough difficulty in addition to the fact that he had some form breaks. You know, this brings in some mathematical problems. Now, what's interesting about the next performer as Tom Schlesinger gets ready to go, uh, his routine is somewhat uh, similar in the beginning as Jeff's. In fact, uh, he does a longitudinal travel, yeah. traveling lengthwise across the horse, turns and does it again, just as Jeff does. Still waiting for Jeff's score as we look at Tom Schlesinger. Tom Schlesinger is a 14-year veteran of the sport. And I think it's tough to follow a judges' conference. Again, Jeff Lutz. They gave him a 9 0. Yeah, it really is. He had a little bobble in the beginning, or in the middle of his routine, and you compound that and, and take that with his, uh, his error at the end, and you're just going to have to take off points. So now Tom Schlesinger will get the green flag. 24 years of age, 5 feet 7, 140 pounds. He's the tallest of our three competitors. And once again, watch him. He's going to start at the end of the horse, do two loops, and then he starts traveling again across the horse, lengthwise, going from pommel to pommel, turns, and then does it again, all the way across the horse. Nice and straight. Looks like he's in a lot of control. Then he travels in flare across the horse lengthwise without the pommel. Very, very difficult. Back more up to the center. Here's a flare to an undercut. And that required scissor sequence. Circles, travels to the end of the horse. There's a flare right up to a hand scan. Good performance. Oh, little bobble. I think he meant to go over on the other side. Let's see if the judge is taking the there. The score you want to beat on pommel horse is 9.8. Well, Tom, Tom should be secure right now in second place after Jeff's mistake. Now, here's his dismount. He travels to the end of the horse. He does a flare, goes up to a handstand, and he wants to do a pirouette. And it's hard for me to tell which way he wanted to go, but I think he wanted to go to the other side of the horse. Score for Tom Flessinger, 9.55. And he has moved into second place. We'll be back with a recap of the scoring as the men move to their third event after this. After two events, Mike Racanelli is our leader in this gold medal round of the U.S. Challenge. His all-around total right now is 19.45. That's six tenths of a head better than Tom Schlesinger. Now let's move to the Still Rings event where Jeff Lutz will be up first. He's a 21-year-old who lives in Fort Worth, Texas. At the Winter Nationals in 1989, they were held in Colorado Springs. He finished second in the all-around. And throughout this, uh, this event, uh, Jeff's been giving me a hard time because he scored a 9.75, and I held the old record on rings with a 9.7, so uh, he's, been, uh, he's been making fun a little bit. We've been having fun with it, though. Set that record back in 1981. I'll tell you, he's deserved it, though. He's just started off with some very nice strength parts, an L-cross pull-out, a plange. Here's his hollow back to a handstand, nice and steady. There's a back giant to a handstand. Another back up rise to a handstand. Dismount. He needed that rally spot. A 9-0 for his pommel horse, a 9.75 for his Florex. He needed a strong set on rings. Let's take a look at his dismount. He dismounts with a full twisting double back flip. Gets good lift and he sees the ground nice and early. So as he sees it, he can zero in and focus on it enough so that he doesn't have to take any steps. He knows exactly where the ground is. Judges like the routine, giving him a 9.9. And that is another record for the Still Rings. 9.9. Nine. He be beat your previous Mark <laughs> Peter Vidmar. 9.9. Nine. Easily overtakes 9.7. Of course, he had the 9.75 in the earlier round. That was a great routine. And 
Yours back in 81 or Jeff Lutz's just now? <laughs> um, <laughs> Jeff Lutz's just now. Okay. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to search my mind for that one, see how I did. Tom Schlesinger, the number two seed, is up next. You recall here's the 9-3 on floor and a 9-5-5 on pommel horse. Get a little bit of trouble on the dismount on pommel horse. That is Francis Allen helping him up to the rings. Francis Allen is the head coach at the University of Nebraska. Well, depending on how the next two performances go, Jeff could find himself right in the thick of things again. There's a kip to an L cross. Back kip. And stiff, stiff press to a handstand. This is called an inverted cross. Upside down iron cross. Right to a handstand. He's staying nice and steady, has good control over the swing. So in Milwaukee, right up to the straddle wall. Looks a little tired there on that press to a handstand. It's his second press in the performance. Setting up for his dismount, giant dislocate. Pipe cap in that back. It's a hard just didn't quite have that. Oh, oh, the steadiness oh, oh, that Jeff did. Jeff was very, very strong in that previous routine. The straddle L was swinging. Is that going to hurt him? As we take another look at the Yamawakis. You want to stay sti still. This is the Yamawaki. Ah, it's kind of a double front well, within the rings, the holding onto the rings. And he bounces up to ah, a straddle L. The straddle L itself is not too difficult of a skill. His dismount's a very good one. It's a giant dislocate into a pike path in that Much higher than on top. And he gets the same score he received for a pommel horse. 955, the number for Tom Schlesinger on the still rings. Jeff Lutz has really muscled himself right back into this competition with that 9-9. Let's see what Mike Racanelli can do. In the previous two events, a 965 on floor, a 98 on pommel horse. That's Keith Avery helping them up to the rings. And Mike scored a 9.65 in round two. He's a strong ring performer. There's a back kick immediately to an out cross. Nice and level. Look how horizontal he is. Okay, back up rise to a handstand. What I like about Mike also is he tries to perform all the skills that he does. He has good head positions. He doesn't just go through the motions of doing a skill. Another L cross. That's mm -hmm. what you're saying now. He really finishes each move. You have to perform out there. Hip to an L, bring a hollow back press. Boy, this, the way that he's structured this routine, he needs a lot of stamina. There's a half and half out dismount. Just about a nice high half in half out. Before we rotate to our next event, sees the ground early enough, they can just zero in right there on the landing. Please take this time to. And the score for Mike Rackenalli is 9.8 as he maintains his lead over Tom Schlesinger and Jeff Lutz. And we're going to pause now for a regional break. We are back at the U.S. Challenge. After the Still Rings event, Mike Racanelli is still our leader. His all-around total, 29.25. That's six-tenths of a point better than number three seed, Jeff Lutz. Well, it's hard to walk away from this sport after you've tasted success at the world level. Do you remember Kurt Thomas? He's 34 years old. And as our Peter Vidmar discovers, when it comes to Kurt Thomas, age is no barrier in gymnastic success. Men's Gymnastics in America had worked hard for respective sports fans throughout the country. 
But in 1978, this sport finally got its big shot in the arm when Kurt Thomas captured the gold medal in floor exercise at the World Championships. It was the first gold medal ever earned by an American in that competition, and Kurt Thomas had a taste of victory he would soon be repeating. After winning two golds, three silver, and a bronze medal at the 1979 World Championships, Kurt retired from competition after the 1980 U.S. Olympic boycott was announced. But now, 11 years after his last competition, Kurt Thomas wants to throw his name in with those of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Al Order, and Mark Spitz, athletes that attempt to defy time. At the ripe old age of 34, Kurt is attempting a difficult comeback. Boy, I just I feel weird on the flies. Earlier I spoke with Kurt and asked him why in a sport dominated by 21-year-olds does he want to compete again at the world level? Well, there are a lot of factors involved. I mean, the first thing I guess was, and most important, is the fact that I think I can do it. I think I can come back, I think I can help the team, and I feel like this is my time. Why is it my time? I don't know, but I mean, I think this is my time to shine. I didn't get the chance in 1980, as you know. Um, I felt you guys standing up there in 1984 on the platform and winning the gold medal. And, I think that uh, there's, there's a place for Kurt Thomas once again in the Olympic Games, and I, that's why I'm back and hanging again. So Kurt, what's the hardest part right now about getting back into it? I think it's, it was basically the beginning and trying to get back into shape, trying to get back into gymnastics competition shape. And I think um, the initial push into competition is going to be the most difficult. Once I'm back in the competition, I think I'm going to roll and things are going to be real easy for me and also you know my body is a little different now I'm a lot older I'm not as agile and I have to be careful and smart about my training and though Kurt is training vigorously he does stop to take a break to watch a former teammate see if he's still got what it takes and while pommel horse has always been his trademark Kurt knows that he's going to have to really focus on his weaker events which he admits are the vault and the still rings but despite his professed weaknesses, the nation's top young gymnasts are taking him seriously. I take Kurt pretty seriously, you know. Uh, I mean, he's obviously uh, one of the best gymnasts we've ever had in this country, and no matter how old he is, uh, um, I'm not going to take him for granted. In fact, uh, I consider him more dangerous than just about anybody right now. So I uh, set my sights on Kurt. From my point of view, I want to kick it in the butt. <laughs> so bad. Uh, I hear all these things he's doing and stuff, you know, and I don't know, you kind of size up your competition and then Kurt comes back and, you know, you got to resize it, you know, you got another guy to contend with and stuff. But, you know, I mean, I think that's great. I mean, that, uh, hope he does what he wants to do. Time and time again, people keep saying, is Kurt Thomas really serious about coming back? You bet he is. Take a look. Yes, Kurt is serious, and he has a definite game plan for the U.S. team. Right now, my goal is to make the team. I want to be in the top 12, and I think if I, if I am in the top 12, I think that's going to really uh, be an accomplishment for me. But still in the back of my mind, I want to win. I'm a winner. I'm not a, a performer. I'm, I'm not just a performer. I'm a winner, and I, I'll do what it takes to get me back on top. You know, Peter, it's hard to tell if it's attitude or ability, or maybe it's a combination of both. But I think he's going to be on that 1992 Olympic team. Well, I think two things are going to depend on that. Uh, number one, he's going to have to bring his skill level up from what he performed 10 years ago, for example. Uh, while he was ahead of his time then, those same things would be behind the time now. And I think he can do that. He's smart enough to know what he has to do. But in my place, he just has to stay healthy. He has to be very, very healthy. And, uh, Boy, that's the age of 34. That's probably going to be the biggest obstacle if he can just keep that body in good shape. Of course, he'll be 36 at the Olympics. All right, we're looking now at Tom Schlesinger as the men have moved to vaulting. A reminder, in men's competition, you get one vault, and it counts. He made a mistake in round two on the vault. Let's see if he does a better job. He did. Oh, 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 He got a little crooked on the landing. He was way crooked in round two, and as a result, he, uh, he uh, landed off to the side and, and basically fell down. Here he took a little step to the right and a little shuffle. 
really the landing is so critical involved because it's such a such a short performance it only lasts a couple seconds and as a result that landing is such a big part of it that you want to land with authority well, for the and just a little bit off for the third time in this meet he has received a 955 that's what he received on rings and pommel horse and now for vault 955 the score for tom schlesinger Reminder, he's currently in third place after three events. Our next vaulter is Mike Racanelli. Currently, he is our leader. Previous scores, 9-8 on the rings, 9-8 on the pommel horse, and a 9-6-5 on floor. And Mike's another gymnast that throughout the challenge has had some problems on vault. He hasn't quite pulled his handspring front with a full twist all the way around. Let's see if he can do it now. Oh, still didn't do it. Oh, this up is a kill. It's going to be a big Oh, all three competitions now, he's really had some problems, and you can see he's really frustrated. Now his lead is only six tenths of a point. Well, he certainly lost it there. Because, first of all, he's going to automatically lose half a point for the landing by not landing on his feet. But there's a reason why he didn't land on his feet. Didn't have the height and the rotation. That there again will also be a deduction. And here's someone that's extremely powerful in the legs. His floor is very, very strong. And he's just having some problems on this one. And they have flashed his score, and it's not a good one. 9.05, the lowest score that he has received this day. 9.05 for number one seed and former leader, Mike Racanelli. Now it's time for Jeff Lutz to vault. He is currently in second place after getting a 9-9 on the still rings. And that pulled him right back into it because he struggled on pommel horse with a 9-0. So anything can happen. It really can. This is getting to be a, an interesting competition so hmm. far. These mistakes are really coming into play him. here. And he does a super high with a one and a half yeah, yeah. Take a step back with the deduction, but hey, I guess right now just landing on your feet is the big thing. Take a look at it again. He really pulls that twist around. It's a blind move. It's difficult to know where the ground is because you can't see it until the ground hits you. But he has enough control to stay on his feet. And that puts him up there in the competition again. That 9-9 nine on rings, nine nine on rings helped him a great deal. This vault didn't hurt either. He got a 9.7. And according to my math, he's our leader. We'll recap all the numbers. But first, we're going to pause for a commercial message. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. After four rotations, Jeff Lutz has climbed back into the lead, going from third to second, now to first by just five hundredths of a point. Jeff Lutz, 38-35. In second place, Mike Racanelli, 38-30. And Tom Schlesinger, 37-95. The men have now moved to the parallel bars. Mike Racanelli will be competing first. And Mike's proven to be a consistent parallel bar performer. He's done well in the, in the last two rounds. 9.65 in the second round. In Sydney, Australia, you saw that he garnered the gold medal for Pommel Horse. He took first all around at that competition in 1989. In 1983, it was Yorkshire against the USA in Yorkshire, England. He took first in the all around competition there as well. And he mounts with an underbar swing. We call this a peach basket. Straddle cut into a swing handstand and then a pirouette. There's a stutz. And another stutz. There's a Diamida front uprise. Hop pirouette. And there's another straddle cut to an L to a straddle cut. Press to a handstand. And a double tuck dismount, let him loose. Mr. Mike Racanelli, 21 years old, will try. Mike Racanelli had the lead after Pommel Horse, hung on to it for still rings, and then with the fall, 
on his dismount from vaulting, slid to second place. Mr. Keene has been packed with exceptional difficulty, but what he does, he does it very, very well. Let's take a look at his dismount, double tuck, he sticks it, no problem, and he'll score well with that routine. John just gave him a 9.65, the score from Mike Rocanelli on the parallel bars. Next up is the man who is currently in the lead at this 1990 U.S. Challenge, and he is Jeff Lutz. Now, Jeff had trouble on the pommel horse, scoring a nine flat. That sent him plummeting to third place. And then he clawed his way back into it, getting a 9.9 nine on rings and a 9.7 on vaulting, and now leads by five hundredths of a point. It's amazing because you could see his attitude after Pommelor thinking, oh, I lost the whole thing, and he had his head down a little bit, and all of a sudden now you can see him really focusing in, saying, come on, I've got to do this. I could win this one. If he gets a 9-7, he's tied for the lead. Anything above 9-7, he'll maintain the lead. And notice he's got those armbands on. He has those for a reason. He does a skill in the middle of his routine that's a one-and-a-half somersault, and he catches the bar in the upper arm position where, he's, where his upper arms are, are on the bar. It's such a a big blow to the arms that uh, if you do it over time without any sort of padding he can end up uh, scraping off some of the skin of his arms and so he said he wears those armbands. Obviously it's allowed in the rules. Has it always been allowed? You know I used to do this skill and I never used them and yet I know I could have <laughs> and I'm wondering why not? Why didn't I use them? There's a back toss for Enterprise. Here's this skill. Catches very hard in the bars but he does it quite well. There's an L. Press up to a handstand. Pirouette, and a double pike, good Jeff landing. Lutz. Nice set by Jeff Lutz, the 21-year-old from Fort Worth, Texas. Should be enough to keep him up there. Jeff is from Fort Worth, Texas. Let's take a look at this. He does a front uprise, and then he really has to crank hard. A pike front, one and a quarter, somersault into the center of the bars again. But now he's back to the... His dismount is a double pike. The double back flip with the legs straight. Little bend, little hook in the toes. A good landing. And the score for Jeff Lutz is 9.65, the exact same number that they gave to Mike Racanelli. So Racanelli gained no ground against Lutz this time out. Now it is Tom Schlesinger's turn to compete. Tom now, if Tom's going to gain any ground, he's going to have to start gaining it here. Parallel bars is a good event for him. He scored a 9.75 in round two. Notice how he's chalking up the bars. This can become very critical to a parallel bar performer. When we used to compete, we used to have a, uh, a wet... Uh, wet cloth that we actually uh, put in sugar water, not just water, to get it wet because it would make it stickier. We wipe uh -huh. that across the bars, then pour the chalk on it, and we get an exceptional grip. Those bars are made of a, uh, of a fiberglass with a wood laminate over them, and so they don't quite have the grip of a, of a wood bar, but they have much, much better spring. And so you've got to really work on that extra grip by chalking up the bars well. Tom Schlesinger needs a perfect 10 to tie for second. So peach basket, straddle cut L, swing handstand, pirouette. The stutz, a little bit low. Front up rise, pirouette. There's a Healy twirl. And another one in a row. Oh, he hit the bar. That's a counter swing and it's going to be a big deduction. There's a V. That's going to really cost him. Presses up to a handstand. There's a back toss. Now he does another one. Right to a handstand. Now he's got to really rotate and do a double pike. Right on time. Too bad. He's really had that swing. This would have been another good score. Well, he has three nine five fives. We'll wait for the time score before the men proceed to their final. Let's take a look at why his foot hit the bar. Well, he does a heely twirl and then he does another one and he gets a little bit too crooked. Uh -huh. And see how he's off to the left and he hits that foot on the way up. There's just no way he can get his body back up there. And the second half of his routine was excellent. He, he did two back tosses in a row. Perfectly. No problem. And then he dismounts with a double pike. Toes pointed, legs straight, just right. He's probably thinking, oh, I just could have hit that Healy twirl. Tom Schlesinger's score is 9.05 as he remains mired in third place. 
We still have more events for the men's competition. Stay with us here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Our regional break is next. We are ready for our final rotation, but after five events, the competition doesn't get much closer than this. Jeff Lutz, the number three seed, is still our leader, but just by five hundredths of a point. 48 to 47.95. Tom Schlesinger's in third, one full point away from first place. Our first competitor on the final event for the men is Jeff Lutz, and it is the high bar apparatus. And so really, Jeff's going to be setting the standard then for Mike Racanelli. Mike's going to know what he's going to have to get in order to try to get first place. What a comeback to Fallen Pommel Horse, which was the second event to come all the way back to first place. Oh, yeah. Setting up for his release move. It's a one-armed finger, but he also does two others. He does a really nice reverse heck with his legs together. There it is, into another, oh, another ganger. by that one. Is that a change? There's a blind change. Looks like he changed it a little bit. Depends on the to see if the judges decide to take anything off in that kitchen. Dismounts. Double out. Oh. Oh. He's got to be happy. So now the pressure's going to be on Mike Racanelli. Of course, in between Jeff Lutz and Mike Racanelli, we still have Tom Schlesinger's routine. Let's take another look at Jeff Lutz's routine. Now here's his reverse heck, legs together, very difficult. And if that's not enough, he says, let's let go again. Do a ganger. His dismount is a double layout with a full twist, basically on the second flip. He starts to twist a little early, but there's the double layout, full out, sees the ground the whole time, takes a little step. Judges give him a 9.8 for that routine. 9.8. Five hundredths of a point, the difference between first and second place. Tom Schlesinger is our next competitor. Next Tom Schlesinger on Pommel Horse received a 9.05, and that uh, really dug a big hole for him. Well, 9.8 was his score in, the, uh, in round two on Horizontal Bar. It's a good event for him. Backup rise, wrong way Stalder. There's a full turn over the bar. Now watch him do it with one arm. Oops, usually he kicks it with one arm and it goes right into the one arm ganger. But this time he had to, had to improvise a little bit and yet you really can't tell. Stoops in to a turning giant. He's a little bit off there. He, he actually uh, left out one of the giant swings in the German giant. He's had to do a little improvising here. But he kept his form. He, was, he, he did a smart performance. Now, to my eye, that routine looked perfect. What happened to those German giants? What was it that he left out? Well, in order to get full credit, he needs to take it around one more time. Oh. So he stoops in, okay. should be going right now into the German Giant, but he goes around one more time on a seat circle because he was off, pushes through, and because he doesn't have enough rotation, he's got to bring it right in. So he, he, he scored a 9-8 in round two, and I guess if, he just, if the judges don't uh, see a reason to deduct, they're not going to take off any points, and you can still get a good score. That's, a double that's, that's one of those cases where the judges have to judge on what they see, not on what they know. Absolutely. And I think that's what happened because the score they give him is an exact same thing that he got in the other round. 9.8. The score for Tom Schlesinger on the high bar. Of course, he's unable to win. He's just too far out of first place. But now here's where the contest is. Jeff Lutz got a 9.8. You're looking at Mike Rappinelli. To tie for first place, he needs a 9.85. To win the all-around outright, he needs a 9.9. Is he good enough to get a 9-9? Let's find out. <laughs> he can handle some pressure. Let's see if he can do it now. Because the pressure is really on. So back up rise. Long way Stalter. Fairway over the top. There's a Stalter. Half turn. 
Another stall turn, as it is, this is really smooth. There's a one arm giant. Into a one arm ganger. There's a catch. I don't know about my mind, I'm going to try to see. turn. Put his hands into an eagle giant. Just may not have the difficulty to bring him up to that level of a nine point nine. It's like the execution. the 9-9 to win. Take a look at his ganger. He does a one-arm giant. Right over the top. Let's go and does a flyaway. This time with a half turn. Done well. His dismount is a double layout with a full twist. Opens up nice and early. Should see the ground enough to land it. Just doesn't quite get his feet in enough to stick it. But it was a good routine. A good routine that garnered him a 9.8. Second place for Mike Racanale. We'll be back to recap all of the numbers. Stay with us here in Las Vegas, Nevada. the scores, this ties the closest finish in meet history. Jeff Lutz defeated Mike Racanelli by five hundredths of a point. The last time that happened was back in 1981 when Jim Hartung beat all Peter Vidmar by the same margin. Right now let's go to Peter Vidmar. He's joined by our champion Jeff Lutz. Well congratulations Jeff. Did you really write it off at the end uh, or at the beginning with Palmer Horse? Well I thought Palmer Horse, I thought it was all over because uh, I mean I had trouble on Palmer Horse and uh, uh, Tom and, and Rack, they're so awesome on horse, and I, you know, I was like, I felt like, oh no, it's over now. But uh, I just, all I want to do is finish up strong, and after that. Well, you sure did, because right after that, then you scored the 9.9 on rings. Now, you gave me a hard time, because you beat my record on rings with a 9.75 in round two. Was this just rubbing it in with a 9.9? Uh, you know, I, I had to do that. I couldn't, I couldn't miss. I, I had to redeem myself from Palmer Horse, too. Well, going into the last event, though, you know, it was only a five hundredths of a point lead that you had on Mike. You had to really be tough to the very end. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else, you know. I just wanted to hit my set and be really clean and see how it went from there. I didn't know how it was going to go, so I'm just l glad I hit. Well, you were tough to the very end. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to the University of Oklahoma's Jeff Lutz, winner of the 1990 U.S. Challenge. Peter and I will be back with some final thoughts, but first we pause for a regional break. The 1990 U.S. Gymnastics Challenge has been a presentation of Sports Channel in association with USGF Productions. Congratulations once again to our winner, Jeff Lutz, taking a one final look at the brackets. You can see Jeff Lutz, the number three seed. He is our winner over Mike Racanelli and Tom Schlesinger. And Peter Vidmer, some final thoughts from you. At the beginning of this telecast, we said that whoever falls, well, that's really going to make the difference. But what happened here is everybody fell on one apparatus. So what did finally prove to be the difference? Well, it kind of balanced everything out. Tom Schlesinger had that mistake on parallel bars, and Mike Racanelli had that fall on vault. But then Jeff Lutz, our champion, had a big fall on the pommel horse, and so it just kind of evened each other out. So what really mattered was his 9.9 .9 performance on the rings. That was enough to launch him back up into the lead and to keep him there, just barely, to win the gold. All right, congratulations once again to Jeff Lutz, the winner. He's a competitor from the University of Oklahoma. All of the colleges and universities are to be congratulated for having fine gymnastics programs. Well, we hope you have enjoyed our tournament style of gymnastics. It's been a long tournament, but I think we really have chosen the best one. Jeff Lutz, the winner this day. For Peter Vidmar, I'm Leander Riley. So long, everyone, from the 1990 U.S. Gymnastics Challenge in Las Vegas, Nevada.